Now, Manning's case is divided. The country, some see Manning as a hero. Others see him as a traitor. Joining us live with more insight, Ian Wallach. He's a criminal attorney. He's live for us in Los Angeles. Ian, you know, it seems like this case, uh, you know, just to put it bluntly, black and white terms, hero, traitor. And yet this case really kind of showed a really kind of deeply troubled young man who was calling out for right. help in many instances and a military that was kind of tone deaf to that in many respects, too. How do you see this case? Uh, well, I do think that that was sort of the, what the defense was trying to put forward. This was a case about mitigating factors right from the get-go. He, you know, he confessed early on to, you know, downloading the materials, to sharing the materials. So he sort of put forth this defense saying, you know, I was confused. I had some gender identity issues that made it very difficult for, for Mr. Manning to, to experience while, while he was, uh, you know, in the very hyper-masculine environment of the military. And they sort of put that forward as a way to try to get the sentence to be, to be lower. Um, I don't know if being confused like that in the, in the military makes you a hero, nor do I, know, nor do I really know yet if, if Bradley Manning is a hero. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm, I am thankful for what, for what he did. I, I, I believe that we need a transparent government, and I think he, he shed light on some pretty horrific practices, and he helped bring about the end of those practices. But he did commit a crime, and he did commit a series of crimes, and he has yet to, to really substantially pay for those crimes. Well, Ian, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about criminal acts, and anyone who looks at that videotape that uh, was right. released uh, would, you know, th this argument that there were war crimes committed there, uh, that's a pretty uh, a stiff charge. And yet when you look at it, these are innocent civilians, uh, journalists from Reuters who were gunned Correct. down. Um, and, and yet these people have not been brought to justice either, have they? No, and that's, that's incredibly uh, unfair and, and frustrating. And our system of justice, both military and regular justice, is inherently unfair. And sometimes the wrong people get prosecuted, and sometimes you know, people who should get prosecuted uh, are, are not. And in this case, you know, it does look like some pretty egregious misconduct you know, took place. I mean, people were you know, gunned down, civilians were gunned down, reporters were gunned down, they weren't posing a threat to anyone, and these individuals were not charged. But that's a separate inquiry. I mean, what Manning did was knowingly take information, uh, gather a tremendous amount of information, 700,000 documents and records, dossiers on detainees, et cetera, and, and, and shared that and, and tried to make it public, and, and that's criminal. And it's also not certain whether he scoured that information uh, to see if it, if it, you know, and it's hard to imagine that he did, to, to, see, to make sure that he protected those you know, who were friendly to U.S. interests uh, abroad. So I, I do think it's criminal conduct, and I do think that there has to be an answer, an answer for it. I'm, oddly, I'm, I am glad that, that, that it happened and, and, and what it helped to bring about. Ian, you're a criminal attorney, and yet uh, for those uh, watching in our international community, the, the military uh, justice system is, is, is different than, uh, than the type of environment you're in. In Correct. terms of an appeals process, um, what's likely to happen now? What are the next steps, and, and how likely is it that uh, that will have any kind of outcome in his favor? Sure. There's a couple of things that are going to happen. Right now, he immediately gets to request for clemency, try to have the, uh, the sentence itself reduced. And because he was uh, given a sentence that in, in excess of one year, uh, there's an automatic appeal that, that's going to start. And there's always the possibility of a pardon later on down the line. Um, uh, I, I cannot see the appellate court, uh, the, 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 the appellate court, military appellate court, overturning this, especially when, you know, he admitted early on uh, this isn't a case about factual innocence. It was, it was a case about mitigation, and I don't believe we're going to see a sentence reduction. So the process, the machinery I expect to go forward, but I, I really don't think there's going to be a change in the outcome. And uh, the system itself, though, uh, given the fact that we've kind of touched on the fact that uh, the, these other people have not been brought to justice, uh, right. how flawed is it? Is it likely that the military might take a a look at itself and say, hey, maybe we need to look at things, or, or is it likely just to kind of stay the same way? I mean, I, I am a little jaded. My, my, my fingers are crossed, and I'm always hopeful that we, our military will take a more severe you know, look at its past conduct and stop you know, hiding its conduct in, in the fashion that it has and, and making people take these extreme and yet dangerous measures uh, uh, to reveal it. But I, I don't think it's likely. I, I am an avid supporter of the, of the Center for Constitutional Rights. I, I don't stand with them so much on, on, the, on the Bradley Manning, uh, on the Manning issue. But as they explore you know, th these, the type of atrocities that Manning exposed or unlawful detention uh, of, of Guantanamo be de detained, I do hope, and, and horrendous mistreatment of those individuals, I do hope that we, uh, we begin to see more accountability. But I, I fear, I haven't seen any you know, in, in 13 or 14 years, and I, I think it's going to be a, a long way off. You know, uh, I, I started this by talking about this, this concept of traitor hero, and I'm just kind of curious, right. in, in the community that you're in, the legal community, 
I'm sure this has been something that's been discussed quite a bit among yes. criminal attorneys. How do you see people landing in, in, in your field on this issue? <laughs> you know, most criminal defense attorneys I know are uh, tend to be more liberal bent and they do perceive uh, you know, him as a hero uh, just for disseminating the information. Uh, some are, are like me, they're more, more centrist and we think in order for someone to be labeled like that, uh, they, and after, they need to have some post-conviction post -conviction punishment. And civil practitioners are terrified that, that you know, this amount of information, which you know, had some compromising information about American forces, uh, was, was disseminated at this, mass, at this mass level, and they don't think that 35 years was a sufficient sentence. So Interesting. it's pretty much along party lines. All right. Ian Wallach, thank you so much for joining us from Los Angeles this evening. Appreciate it.